Welcome back to that God Power channel. This is the channel where we unlock the God Power that's laying dormant on the inside of you. But first today, what we're going to do is we're going to continue with our breakdown of the book of Matthew from the Bible. And if you didn't join us last time, last time we was on chapter 22. So this time we'll pick it up on chapter 23. Um, if you didn't see those older videos, please go back and watch them so you can understand the story and where we're at right now. Uh, but if you uh, did watch them... Alright, so at the end of chapter 22, the Pharisees and Sadducees was trying to trap Jesus up and get him to say the wrong thing. But he kept on answering them with just these real good answers that they couldn't even say that back to. So they were hush mouth. Now, starting in the beginning of chapter 23, this is where Jesus warns all the people against the religious leaders. He said to the crowds and his disciples, the teachers of religious law and Pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. So practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't follow their example. For they don't practice what they teach. They crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. Everything they do is for show. On their arms, they wear extra wide prayer boxes with scripture verses. They love to receive respectful greetings as they walk into the marketplaces and to be called rabbi. Don't let anyone call you rabbi, for you have only one teacher, and all of you are equal as brothers and sisters. And don't address anyone here on earth as father, for only God in heaven is your spiritual father. And don't let anyone call you teacher, for you have one teacher, the Messiah. The greatest among you must be a servant. But those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. So basically, Jesus is telling the crowds and the disciples that these dudes that are walking around as the religious leaders, yes, a lot of what they're saying and teaching is true. However, how they're living their lives, do not follow that example because they're exalting themselves. They're walking around like gods on earth when, nah, it's only one God. And they're, they want to be treated above everybody else when in reality, they're equal with everybody. So in our society today, that still happens, uh, especially in the Catholic religion, because I hear them going to the confession, talking about, Father, forgive me of my sins. But they're talking to a dude. Jesus will deal with them. Uh, and actually, Jesus does condemn them in the next verse. Uh, in verse 13, he starts condemning all the religious leaders. He's like, what sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites. For you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You won't go in yourselves and you don't let others enter either. What sorrows awaits you, teachers of religious law and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you cross land and sea to make one convert. And then you turn that person into twice the child of hell you are yourselves. Blind guides, what sorrow awaits you? For you say that it means nothing to swear by God's temple, but that is binding to swear by the gold in the temple. Blind fools, which is more important, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred? And you say that you swear by the altar is not binding, but you swear by the gifts on the altar is binding? How blind. For which is more important, the gift on the altar or the altar that makes the gift sacred? When you swear by the altar, you are also swearing by it and everything on it. And when you swear by the temple, you are swearing by it and by God who lives in it. And when you swear by heaven... For you're careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore the more important aspects of the law, justice, mercy, faith. You should tithe, yes, but don't neglect the more important things. Blind guides, you strain your water so you won't accidentally swallow a gnat, 
but you swallow a camel. Clearly, Jesus is not too happy with the religious leaders or the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees because they have been teaching the right things, but in their examples and what they force on the people to do that's extra is kind of not. So going on to verse 25, Jesus is still getting at these niggas. And what he says is, What sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law, you Pharisees, hypocrites? For you are so careful to clean the outside cup of the dish, but inside you're filthy and full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first wash the inside of the cup and your dish will be clean too. What sorrows awaits you, religious teachers of law and you Pharisees, hypocrites? For you are like the whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurities. Outwardly, you look like righteous people, but inwardly, your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. What sorrows awaits you, teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites? For you build tombs for the prophets that your ancestors killed, and you decorate the monuments of the godly people that your ancestors destroyed. Then you say, if we had lived in those days of our ancestors, we would have never have Jordan in killing those people. But in that sand, you testify against yourselves that you are indeed the descendants of those who murdered those prophets. Go ahead and finish what your ancestors started, you snakes, sons of vipers. How will you escape the judgment of hell? Therefore, I'm sending you prophets and wise men and teachers of religious law, but you will kill some by crucifixion. You will flog others with whips in your synagogues, chasing them from city to city. And as a result, you will be held responsible for the murder of all godly people of all time. From the murder of the righteous Abel, to the murder of Zechariah, son of Berkiah, whom you killed in the temple between the sanctuary and the altar. I tell you the truth, this judgment will fall on this very generation. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often have I wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. And now, look. Your house is abandoned and desolate, for I tell you this, you will never see me again until you say, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. So, Jesus really condemned all the people uh, that were teaching religious law and Pharisees that were doing it wrong. And he says they're not going to escape the hellfire because they've been doing a really bad job at trying to be religious and righteous. So, in your walk, when you're trying to be religious and righteous, Try to hold tight to how Jesus is and what Jesus is talking about and make sure you're not being like the Pharisees and the teachers of religious law. Because if you are, it may look good to the outside, but ah, on the inside, your cup is dirty, dog, and you got to clean it up. So follow God, follow Jesus's example. It is right here in the book. Uh, that was Matthew chapter 23. Thank you for joining me. I hope all y'all have a beautiful day. Hope you gain insight to this chapter. I hope that you can touch somebody today in a way that they need to be. Um, give somebody something. Give somebody a jewel, a nugget, or uh, a compliment even. You know, make them feel good. Make them smile. And I'm sure that will go a long way if we all do that. But thank you for listening. Again, make sure you like, subscribe, click the bell to be notified. And remember that you got that God power. Tapping the sources, calling the vibes. I just thank God I'm alive. I just thank God that I'm fly. I just thank God for my bonds. Every night we